Hello and welcome to another Every Tuesday tutorial. In this week's tutorial, we are going to ring in the new year with a resolutions checklist. So you can use this for any year in the future as well, but I wanted to do kind of a fun spin on it. So these are all resolutions that have verbs. So we've got create, practice, try, celebrate. You can switch these out with any kind of verbs that you'd like, but I've got 10 here to get you started. So what you see on screen is exactly what we're going to be creating together. So I'm gonna give you the colors, I'll give you the size, and then we'll just jump right in. So I am working in RGB. I did a test print on my home printer scanner combo. It's a really basic printer scanner combo and the colors matched up almost exactly in RGB mode. So you can change this to CMYK if you'd like, but I tend to get more vibrant rich colors as a result of printing RGB with my home printer. So that is the reason for that. So the colors that I'm using, this light color right here, which is for the background. If you don't want to print a background color, this is what it looks like. If you you just print it out on regular paper so by all means you can exclude this background color if you want to save on ink but I'll give it to you anyway if you'd like a background color so this is the color build for that very light blue color this is a little bit darker this one's the darkest blue and this is kind of our gold color right here that we're going to be using for the yes column all right, so this is sized four inches by eight inches. I'm going to copy everything so we can use it as a guide as we're creating it. So I'm gonna go file new and put in four inches wide by eight inches tall. If you are using a background color, you will wanna include a bleed right here. I've got a 0.125 inch bleed, which is the equivalent of an eighth of an inch, which is the standard bleed size. Right here, my color mode is RGB. My raster effects, which is my resolution, is 300 PPI, which is also the standard print resolution. And when you're all set, hit create. And I'm just going to paste in our example over here so we've got it to use as a guide. I'm gonna keep my colors on the top though. All right, so I don't have rulers turned on yet, so I wanna turn those on. So you can turn those on by hitting Command R or Control R on a PC, and you can see we've got our rulers right now. And I like keeping a guide right in the middle of my artwork so I can keep everything centered or have an idea of where my center point is as I'm working. So I'm just gonna click on the left ruler over here and drag out a guide to two inches right here. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is just drop that background in and put it on its own layer and lock it so it's stuck there for good as we're working. So I'm going to create a brand new layer and just call this background color. And I'm gonna hit M on my keyboard for my rectangle tool and just drag out my color and stretch it between my bleed lines. That way it goes all the way to the edge. And I'm just going to eyedropper this lighter blue color and lock this layer. And now I'm gonna create a new layer right above it and title this one artwork. All right, so we are all ready to go. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just drop in my wreath right here along with my text. This wreath is part of my winter watercolors kit. I also offer a free Winter Watercolors mini kit, so click on the link in the video description. You can go pick up the mini kit, which does include an arrangement that you can use, or you can view the full kit, and there are five custom wreaths within the full kit that you could use, and this is the very first one right here. So I'm going to go grab that right now. So I'm gonna go File, Place. Okay, so it's my wreath number one right here, so I'm just gonna hit Place right here, and I want this to be towards the top part of my layout right here. And I want it to be a pretty good size, but not too big because I need enough room for my checklist down here. So I'm just gonna reduce this just a little bit. And we can lock this, that way it doesn't move as we're working. And you can temporarily lock an item by hitting Command-2 or Control-2 on a PC. Let me center this. So with it selected, hit Command-2 or Control-2. You can also select it and go Object, lock and that will also lock it. All right, so now we're gonna drop in our text. I'm using my font called Skinny Jeans. So I'm going to type out 2019 on its own. And then I'm also going to type out resolutions checklist in all caps. Okay, and I'm going to center align both of these. I'm gonna bring them up here and change the font to Skinny Jeans and skinny jeans script right here. All right, increase the size. 
make 2019 a little bit larger. And this letting right here, or line height, is a little more generous than I'd like it to be, so I'm just gonna toggle it down over here in my character palette, and that looks better. All right, so now I'm just gonna color these, our dark blue color up here. All right, so moving right along. So we have two titles right here. One is Resolutions in Action, and the other one is Accomplished, our Accomplished column. So we're gonna drop these in. These ribbon elements are from my Skinny Jeans font. They actually come as vectors for Illustrator, and you can see here's the ribbons down here. So I'm just gonna copy these and bring them in. The link to my font, Skinny Jeans, is right in the video description if you wanna check that out. All right, so... I'm going to move these over here. And you can see how this one is much longer than this one is. I actually wanna make these a little bit smaller too. So this one's gonna go right here. And this one needs to get a little bit longer, so a nice trick to make a vector object a little bit longer. You just come over to it and then hit your direct select tool, which is keyboard shortcut A. And you're just going to draw a rectangle around the part of it you'd like to stretch out so half of your anchor points are selected and then you can just start dragging them and as you're dragging them hold shift and it'll keep it straight and that way you can get a longer one without it looking too weird all right let's see how that looks that looks a little too long i'm just going to shorten it the same way i lengthened it hit my direct select tool and then just bring it in just a little bit. All right, that looks good. So now I can drop my text in, which we're using Skinny Jeans caps this time. There are three styles to the Skinny Jeans font. There's a cap style, a script style, and then the symbols. So these vector elements also come as their own font too, as a symbols font. So I'm going to use the caps to write my headlines. So resolutions in action is my first one. And then my second one is accomplished. And we wanna make the accomplished one the same color as our background. So I'm just gonna eyedropper that background. And this ribbon is our dark blue. And this ribbon is kind of our medium blue right here, but our text is the dark blue, just to differentiate these headlines. All right, so that is looking really nice. And now we just need to add in our resolutions and our checklist over here. So I'm gonna type all of these out using the Skinny Jeans font once again. And this, I've got it set at 11 points with a 30 point letting over here. So I'm just gonna type them all out over here and then I'll show you how to drop in the lines so they're perfectly aligned with your text. And then we'll just make our check boxes and we'll be done. Okay, so I've got all of my verbs typed out and I need them to be left aligned. So with them selected, just hit this icon up here for a line left. And then I had mentioned before that these are going to be 11 points and then 30 points on the letting right here. So now I can just align them right here. You can also draw guidelines if you'd like additional guidelines, but I'm aligning these to my ribbon right here. And you probably saw that there was this pink line that showed up that let me know that it was aligned right there. That's your smart guide. Um, if you don't have smart guides turned on, I highly recommend it. They're super helpful as you work, especially with layout design. And you can turn those on by going view smart guides and just make sure that's checked or you can hit Command U or Control U on a PC. Okay, so we've got all of our verbs dropped in. Let me change these to our dark blue color. Toggle these down a little bit. Okay, and I just wanted to make sure that I left enough room between the edge of the paper and where these begin. If they get too close, you don't, when you're cutting this down, you don't wanna slice off any of your text. Okay, so we're gonna drop in our lines now. So I'm gonna hit the backslash key on my keyboard and I'm just going to get right underneath my first word right here. Let me zoom in really close so you can see. Once I see my pink line right here, that's kind of showing up right underneath it, I'm just gonna stretch this out and as I'm stretching it out, I'm gonna hold shift 
And I'm going to go until the end of the ribbon right here, which is a little past center, just to give a little more visual interest so it's not too symmetrical. So I'm going to come to about here. So now I need to apply a stroke to this. You can see there's no fill and no stroke on this. So I'm going to select the stroke so it's brought to the front. I'm going to hit I on my keyboard. Let me zoom out a little bit. And I'm going to hold shift and eyedropper this medium blue color right here. And this is just a little too thick for me. If I zoom in here, you can see. So I'm going to come over here to my stroke palette. You can get to your stroke palette by going window stroke. And I'm just going to reduce this to 0.5, so half a point. And I'm going to apply a rounded cap and a rounded corner to it just so that the ends are rounded instead of blocked off like a square. You can see the nice little rounded cap right there. Okay, so now we need to replicate this line and bring it all the way down to the bottom one. So with it still selected, hold Alt or Option, click and drag, and while you're dragging, hold Shift, and that'll keep it straight. And I'm gonna come all the way down to organize down here until it's perfectly underneath. And that looks good. Okay. So now what we need to do is fill in the rest. So we have eight words in between these two. So we're gonna use our blend tool to add in the rest of these lines. So you can do that by just coming over here to your toolbox. This is your blend tool. Double click on it and toggle this down for spacing and choose specified steps and put in eight right here. And then hit okay. And then you're just gonna hover over the first line until you see that little star appear. Click on it once and then come all the way down to the other one until you see the plus sign, and then click on that one. And that will drop the rest of them in, and you can see they're all perfectly underneath our words. But you can see it definitely affects readability on all of these ones where the line is touching the word. It looks a little cleaner if the line begins after the word, so now we're going to take care of that. So if I select one, all of them get selected because they're all blended together. So we need to separate all of these. So in order to separate them, all you want to do is go Object, Expand, and hit OK. And then you want to ungroup. So Command Shift G or Control Shift G on a PC. And now I can select each one individually. And there's still stroked lines. So now I can come in here. I can select my line, hit A on my keyboard, click on the anchor point tool right here so it's selected and then I can drag it and as I'm dragging it hold shift and it'll keep it straight and now I can adjust each one of these lines click on the anchor point start dragging as you're dragging hold shift to keep it straight once again click on your anchor point click and drag hold shift to keep it straight so I'm just going to come through and do each of these Okay, so we've got our list, so now we just need to put in our little check boxes right here. So we're going to start by creating our yes and our no check box. So grab your rectangle tool. You can also hit M on your keyboard for your rectangle tool. And I'm just going to drag out a square until it aligns the until the bottom aligns with our line right here. And I'm going to color it the same medium blue color right here. Let me toggle this over so it kind of aligns with our ribbon. And then I'm going to type in yes. Color this our gold. And set it right next to the square. I want my square just a little bit smaller. That looks good. And now I'm going to copy this. So select them both. Select one, hold shift and select the other to select them both. Hold alt, click and drag, and then while you're dragging, hold shift to keep it straight. And we can put in our no box right here. And our no is going to be our dark blue color. Move these apart a little bit more and let's center these all underneath our accomplished ribbon. All right, so you can actually blend multiple objects. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. So now we want this repeated all the way down the same way we did the line, but we have multiple items right now. And because we have multiple items in order to repeat them in the same way, we need to group them together. So just Command G or Control G on a PC to group. And now we wanna make a copy 
that's in line with our bottom one once again. So hold Alt, click and drag while you're dragging, hold Shift until I see that pink line with my smart guides. And now I can blend these together in the same way I did before. So I'm just gonna double click on my blend tool, make sure specified steps is still selected and that it's set at eight and hit okay. And now I can click my top one, click my bottom one, and now I've got them all in there. And they're all perfectly aligned with the previous text lines over here. So that is how to create a resolutions checklist in Adobe Illustrator. Once again, I'll leave links to the winter watercolor kit as well as the free winter watercolor mini kit and the font skinny jeans if you'd like to follow along exactly. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please subscribe and don't forget to head on over to my blog every hyphen Tuesday.com for even more design and lettering tutorials and freebies. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you next time.